Okay, so today I'm gonna do a get ready with me. I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do yet, but I am gonna chat about possibly going cruelty free. Now, I've been thinking about doing it for a while. I mean, it used to be really difficult for somebody who is kind of on a budget with makeup um, to afford cruelty free makeup, but now it's like there are so many drugstore brands that are cruelty free and some of the best ones are cruelty free. So I'm gonna start by priming my eyes. I'm actually just gonna use some foundation slash concealer from an RCMA palette that I've got. I'm on the hunt for a cruelty free concealer currently from the drugstore, a good one. But I really wanna try Flower Beauty. Like I've heard a lot of good things about it and it's owned by Drew Barrymore. Um, who actually came into my work once and apparently was just super nice everyone. I wasn't there, of course, I missed work that day or I mean, I wasn't working that day, I had family in town. But, I mean, she just seems like a really awesome person, you know? Anyway, so I'm just gonna use that to prime. So I'm gonna use as much cruelty-free stuff as I can today. Um, because I've just been, you know, thinking about it lately. I've been thinking about my own animal lately and all the animals in Houston. Like, I can't even, I mean, the people too, obviously, but it just, it kills me because it, I was in a flood once um, back when I was younger. Um, our town flooded. It was insane. It filled up like a cereal bowl. Luckily, you know, we didn't suffer as much damage. Our basement flooded, but it wasn't, Definitely wasn't as bad as a lot of people. I mean, we had a shop bag, we had to replace the carpet, we had to replace a lot of stuff down there, but you know, in comparison, it just wasn't, I mean, the town was just terrible. And one thing that were, I, that stuck out to me was all the animals. Like, you, that's something that most people don't really think about when they think about flood devastation is that these animals in shelters, they pretty much just get abandoned. And, you know, it happened where I live and you know, a lot of animals got abandoned. One of my cousins actually ended up with a couple of cats um, from the flood that had been misplaced and you know, she had them forever. They were great cats. But anyway, I've just been thinking a lot about the animals and from in Houston, thinking about my own dog. And you know, there's just really no reason for cosmetics being tested on animals. It just it's, it's, so, it's such a superficial thing to torture an animal with. It doesn't, doesn't really make any sense to me. Anyway, I'm just gonna go ahead and set that. I'm, I'm gonna set it with Tempura from Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance Palette. Um, Anastasia Beverly Hills is cruelty free. Obviously not a drugstore brand, but cruelty free nonetheless. And okay, I'm gonna do something pretty simple with my eyes today. I'm going to use, um, first I'm going to start off with the contour palette. I'm just going to use, well actually I'm going to use the shade right here in the NYX contour palette. I'm going to put that as my transition. And this is, whoops, NYX is actually cruelty free. Um, as is Sonia Kashuk. And this is the brush I'm going to use. This is the Sonia Kashuk 109 brush. So, anyway. Yeah, I just can't stop thinking about the animals because I've seen what it does firsthand. I've seen flooding firsthand, obviously on a smaller scale because I'm from a smaller town. I'm not from a town anywhere near the size of Houston. They turned the elementary school, I mean, they turned all the schools in town into shelters and the schools were up on top of the hill in town so they didn't get flooded. Thank um, it, the f water got so high that like um, the ballpark so the ballpark was down by the river where I used to play t-ball and softball growing up. And the, you know how high, if you've ever seen a ballpark, you know how high those fences go because they have to catch, you know, foul balls and all that. Um, and those, so those fences are really, really high. They had like plastic bags and just trash stuck in them for what seemed like years. Like, I mean, it was just, that it was just crazy and a flood is the only natural disaster I've ever personally been involved in myself but like I said I was very lucky I was one of the lucky ones I didn't get put out of my house you know we got put out of our basement but really who cares like we didn't get put out of our house we didn't lose a whole lot of 
our belongings um, like a lot of people did. We missed like a whole month of school or maybe two months. I don't know. We missed a lot, a lot, a lot of school. I do remember that part. And I remember me and my mom would go up on the hill and kind of look at the water and how high it was because you could kind of overlook it from where we were and you could see, um, you could see I mean, it just looked like where there were once buildings and stuff. It just looked like a giant lake. It was ridiculous. And I was so young at the time. I was like 10 or 11, maybe. I didn't really grasp the, I didn't really understand the gravity of the situation. Like I was just like, oh, it's a flood. This is what we have to do and we're doing it. This happens. But now looking back on it, I mean, it was just, it was, it was crazy. It was terrible. Okay, so I'm going in with Makeup Geek chickadee next and makeup geek is cruelty free um i'm gonna try and keep that lower on my like lower than this transition shade speaking of animals i used to have one had her for 13 years i got her when she was one she was almost 14 um when she died so i mean in dog years like she essentially was 14 she lived a good long life she was a pit bull um, when I got her, I didn't really know what pit bulls were. I just knew that, you know, these people had puppies. I wanted to go see them. I saw the, that somebody had puppies in the paper and I was like, I'm going to go get a puppy because I had just moved out of my house. My mom wouldn't let me take our dog to college. So I was like, I was just hell bent on getting my own dog. And my mom was like, you better not, you better not. I was 17 when I went to college. So understandably, like she knew, she was like, you can't take care of a dog. You better not get your own dog. But I was like, I was a freaking rebel. I didn't care. I wanted a dog. I'd lived with dogs my entire life. I'd never been without one until I moved out of the house. So I wanted a dog and I went to look at these puppies. <laughs> and that I saw, like I said, that I saw in the paper and did I take a puppy home? No, when I got there, I was like, why are you guys giving these puppies away? And they were like, well, Richard's in the pokey is what they said. <laughs> Richard was their son. The pokey is jail. Like I said, I'm from a small town. They're like, well, Richard's in the pokey. And he left us with these dogs. It was, you know, his parents. So they were just getting rid of the puppies. I don't know how long that they'd been there. I don't know if she had had the puppies there, but anyway. I was like, well, what are you gonna do with the the mom? What are you gonna do with her? I should mention that when I first drove up that driveway, the big dog, the mom, came like running down the hill at me and I was like, and she just sat at my feet and looked at me like, hey, like, we're best friends. I've known you forever. I can't believe you've come back and said hi to me. Like, it was just the most adorable thing ever. So of course I'm looking at the puppies. I wanna take one home and I asked them, I was like, what are you going to do with this dog, with the mom? And they were like, oh, well, we're going to drop her off at the shelter on the way in. Next time we go into town, they're like, once the puppies are gone, we don't need her. And um, on my way out there, I had passed an animal shelter. Anyway, I was like, what are you going to do with her? And they're like, well, we're going to drop her off at the shelter. And I just thought to myself, well, that sucks. And I was like, what about this puppy? And he's like, we've gotten rid of 12 puppies in two days. He was like, somebody's going to come get this puppy. We've had people call since you called. And I was like, um, okay, well just give me the dog, the mom. And they were like, really? Why do you want her? And I was like, uh, because she's a sweetie and she was just sitting there looking at me and I just, I felt bad for her. And anyway, they're like, why do you want her? And I ended up taking her. Anyway, I'm gonna go in with, next I'm gonna go in with um, Coco Bear by Makeup Geek. I'm just gonna kind of put it on the outside. But anyway, she didn't look that good. She had a big like gash on her head, just apparently. And I was like, what happened to her head? And they're like, well, she tried to get out. She tried to escape from where she was at on that farm. And she got it stuck under a fence and she had gotten stuck there all night long. And they had woken up the next morning and had to get her out from under the fence. And it was just terrible, like a pretty bad wound on her head. Um, and well, it was superficial, but it was just pretty widespread. There was a lot of it, you know. Her teats were just super saggy and long because she had been nursing puppies and she just, her ears were frayed on the ends. Like she hadn't been very well taken care of. I mean, it was like bare minimum. Feed her, give her water, give her a place to run. 
type thing. And they couldn't believe that I wanted her. And I was like, well, I do want her. I'm going to take her. And they were like, okay, suit yourself. And we, they were like, she's sweet. You know, she'll ride in the car really nicely. And they were not wrong. She sat the back there in the car and just, I mean, she, I could not have asked for a better dog, honestly. Like, we bonded. I remember that ride home. I remember it. I just remember her sitting back there, me having a brand new dog I did not know what to do with. Um, but, you know, I, I grew up on a farm. We bred border collies. Like, I knew a lot about dogs. Like, I was very confident in my ability to take care of her. Anyway, it was just... I couldn't believe I had a dog. Like, I didn't really think I was going to get a puppy when I went to that farm to look at them, but here I was with a one-year-old or one-and-a-half-year-old dog who had just had a litter of puppies. But yeah, it was just a crazy... It was just crazy how that happened. I didn't tell anybody I was getting her. I just, my mom was so mad. Oh my god, she was mad. She was so mad that I got her because she told me not to get a dog. And I was like, oh, uh, well, okay, I'm going to get a dog. She, she was just the best dog on the planet. She had, she, a few years ago, got a really bad critical disease, critical illness. Um, this is called inflammatory bowel disease. Um, what, what is required for them to be treated appropriately, those dogs? Um, which is lots and lots of steroids, lots of meds, lots of checkups. And the checkups are what cost because you have to have their blood work taken every two weeks for a few months. And then it goes to like every three weeks for a few months. It's expensive. And every time you do those labs, they're like $300. Luckily, my mom helped me out because over the years, she too fell in love with Jade. Her name was Jade. Jade was the sweetest dog. I don't think I'll ever have another dog like her. But you know what? I'm okay with that. Would have kept her forever if I could. But anyway, she eventually succumbed to cancer. Um, she was so old when they diagnosed her with it. At first they thought it was arthritis because um, she was kind of limping one day and I was like, well, I'm gonna take her to the vet. Um, they thought it was arthritis. They kind of treated her for arthritis, did some x-rays, didn't see anything appreciable that needed you know, immediate attention but it was such a fast spreading cancer that when they first did the x-rays and all those tests, you know, they wouldn't have caught it. And we did her checkups. She was in and out of the vet a lot her past few years. She had very frequent checkups, very frequent labs done. And I mean, we did everything we could to keep her happy and healthy. And so of course all the vets, when Jade was in there, like, oh great, she has a cut on her toe. She's bringing her in because I took her to the vet for everything. But no, they they were they were they were um, everybody thought she'd be fine, and um, it was just arthritis. But you know, less than three weeks later, she was being euthanized in that same exact vet room. And, um, there wasn't really anything we could do to help her. Anyway. Okay. I've just been thinking a lot about animals lately. and Going cruelty free and animals in Houston. And I'm going to move on. I'm going to do my foundation now. I'm going to use the Tarte Rainforest of the Sea. Tarte is cruelty free. I'm also going to prime with the Milani Make It Last Setting Spray. Also a cruelty free brand and drugstore. And honestly, like, I've heard the excuses from brands um, that aren't cruelty-free that are like, well, you know, we have to sell in the Chinese market. And if brands like us, if big brands like us are um, selling there, then we can influence their their policy. And I'm just like, whatever. Just say caution. And I'm, like I said, I'm not going, I haven't gone cruelty-free yet. Still have a lot of products that aren't cruelty free. I'd say the majority of my collection is cruelty free by accident. I'm gonna use what's left of all the stuff I have. But from now on, I'm going to try and just stick to cruelty free. Um, but like I said, I'm kinda, this is a slow process for me. Obviously, I'm gonna have to, it's not so much not using the stuff I have, cause I, I spend money on it. It's more 
just um, from here on out, you know, trying to be more thoughtful and conscious of where my money is going. But at the same time, I'm not going to preach to other people. I'm not going to judge other people for what they want to buy and spend their money on. It's their money. You know, I'm not going to sit here and tell everybody that because I don't eat red meat that you shouldn't eat red meat either. Like, I just don't think that's the right way to go about it. An hourglass, cruelty free brand, elf, cruelty free brand. And like I said, that whole excuse, well, we're selling in China because we're leading the, we're leading the fight for China one day not requiring animal testing. And I'm just like, that's just an excuse. Just an excuse to make money. Just say you want to make money. You know, just say like, well, I'm sorry, I want to make money. I'm sorry, I want my brand to sell in China and tap into that one and a half billion person population, many of which probably buy makeup. Just say that, okay? Don't jerk us around. Jeez. Try to make us think you're doing, doing, doing good, doing the, doing the good thing here. So I'm gonna use that e.l.f. blush brush again and I'm gonna go into the NYX Sweet Cheeks blush palette. I'm like, what is this called? Okay, here it is. And I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use this one right here. It's warm pink on the end. Back to chickadee. Then I'm going to take a pencil, 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 pencil brush back into Cocoa Bear and I'm going to kind of focus that on the outer part of my eye. And I want that black to kind of follow that wing. For lips, I'm going to use Lime Crimes Lana. Fun fact, Lana is one of my best friend's name, which is why I bought this lipstick. Love it. I mean, it's pre color too, but I mainly bought it because it's called Lana. Alright, guys, thanks for watching, and hopefully, I will have an update on the cruelty free situation. And in the next tutorial, I'm hoping it's going to be like all cruelty free drugstore. If I can manage to find everything I need, um, that's what we're going to do. Peace out, guys.